Hey everyone, so welcome again to our Godot exploration or exploration and today is day 18 and I just want to cover let me just bring this back to 300 and I want to scale our camera here one let's say let's say 1.2 perhaps uh, just to see and Okay, so I think 1.2 will be, or let's just stick with one for the meantime while we're doing some testing. And I'm actually exploring how we can go and try to have a concept in Unity, which is the prefab concept in Unity, and how we can try to go and implement that in Godot. And I've been doing a little bit of exploration and reading, and uh, we can see in some documentations that Unity, if we can try to compare Unity with Godot, uh, the scenes in Unity will be a collection of game objects, right? So let's say in our game scene, we would have a number of objects like platforms, player sprites, and objects like power-ups and even the different artwork that we would be putting uh background and those are objects that we can try to put inside of a scene so in good dot scenes are a collection of nodes if we try to look at it this is a main scene that we're working on right now and one of the things that we will be able to realize is that when we are working with good dot we would see that Scenes are actually similar to prefabs. Uh, if we will be creating one in Unity, and that means we can try to go and instantiate a scene in Godot. So what I'll be doing here is I'll be creating right now, and I'm going to save this empty. And I would want to... Uh, let's have this empty scene as a 2D scene. I'm just going to call this, let's just try this out. Um, enemy one. And in here, I would want to have a child node, uh, similar with, uh, we added a character body 2D. And this will be prompting us, uh, consider adding a collision shape 2D. Okay. So, that's the same thing that we did in our condition shape 2D. All right. And now it's telling us that we need to have some sort of a shape or resource for it. So we'll have to go into a circle shape or a new rectangular shape. And I want to also add that animated sprite. 2D. And in here, we would want to have a uh, spike frames. And these are things that we did in the previous discussions that we've had, right? So I'm just going to add an empty new sprite frame. And in that sprite frame, I'm just going to have a placeholder, which is the square. And right now, I want to save the scene. And I'm just going to say we have layers. So I'm just going to create a folder and I'm going to name it enemy enemies and this is going to be enemy one that the SCN and right now I was wondering if we can try to go and add a script to this so let's have a script 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 attach a script and we're just going to say that this is going to be enemy one that GD and I think we can also go and try to have this renamed into uh, enemy one. Okay. So just for placeholder. And here, just don't be, again, we'll try to cover, I'm trying to go and look at it with the perspective of trying to read line by line each of the things that are being done for us uh, by Godot. So, we have this extend keyword if you have some background with other programming languages so that means this character body 2d may 
have already or uh, this will have a number of properties and a number of methods that we can try to access that has been written already for us and that's why we're calling this extends character body 2d so we would want to have some things that set up here so let's first try to go and set up some variables and i'm going to use the export and we're setting up a speed value and we're going to set the type into a float value and in here let's have an export and again this is just for us to test out if we can go and make an enemy or instantiate an enemy but i'm just going to have some variables here first And let's sign this with a uh, 5.0. So we did cover what is the at export keyword. That means this is going to be allowing us to have those values serialized on our uh, inspector. And we can change them for debugging purposes. And one of the things that I just want to explore here is on how we can try to go and instantiate this enemy one that we've just created. So you would see if we right click on the main scene, there's this instantiate child scene. So that means if we go and look for that enemies, enemy one.sen. Uh, but before that, let's go to the 2D scene here first. So we don't have any, and in here we have in the scene that square that will serve as a placeholder. And in here, we would want to have an instantiate child scene and enemy one. And now we have that enemy square, right? And I'll just change the scale or texture. Nope, not texture. There's that. There's a transform property. I want to reduce that to 0.5 perhaps. Okay, so that won't be too big. And let's zoom in a little bit. And we want to move this down here. We just, so you would see this one. If I go back here, uh, the transform, let's see, where's that transform? It's still number one. Okay. And this is, uh, this now has that value of 0.5. And if we try to, instantiate another child scene and we still have that value of one uh in here so let's just go back here where's the transform okay and that's still the value of the parent or the if you have some background with unity again prefab uh, something similar to prefab, the functionality or the features of a prefab that we can try to utilize in different scenes that we are working on. So what if I go and try to set this to 0.5? What would happen? And if we try to instantiate another enemy square, so let's just have this here for the meantime. What would happen? And take note, I have change the scale value of our enemy one scene that we know uh, has a scale value of 0 0.5 now. And if we go back here and if we try to go and instantiate another child scene, you would see it now has that same feature. So I think this is going to be very helpful if we want to have one entity parent entity and then most of the base information uh properties that we want to set for let's say an enemy one and we would want to have certain property set color perhaps let's say can we change the color of the, uh, this to, or, or texture uh, i think because this is the artwork that we have here so Again, uh, what I just want to emphasize here is that we are creating some sort of an instance of this enemy one in level one. Okay, so we now have three of those instances 
And all of this will have a, col a collision shape 2D and animated sprite 2D. So that means this one, uh, if we try to go and play this, we shouldn't be able to move when there's that, because there's that collision shape 2D that we have set. Okay. What if we try to delete that collision shape 2D? What would happen? Uh, let's see and test that out. Delete node. Okay. Now the parent doesn't have a collision shape. What would happen if we try to move? And are this going to, you would see now we're not, we're able to move past the sphere because there's no collision shape 2D. How about the other one here? Let's just check. And move up here and still no collision shape 2D. But if I again, I want to go and have a collision shape 2D here. So let's just go add a child node, collision shape 2D, just as a proof of concept. And of course, this should have a collision shape and rectangle. I want to have that rectangle. Let's increase that according to the size of our object. And now we should be able to go and work with that. Okay. So we can now see we are not able to move on that uh, square uh, object. And some other thing that I just want to explore here is one thing that I want to do is to make this enemy move towards the player uh, once there's a certain range so i've been exploring on how to do this already and let's try to go back to our enemy here and let's have that script opened up and we are declaring some global i was i am still thinking about global variable declarations and function scope uh, declarations because there are some cases in some programming languages you have what we call the scope and i think this is a good thing to talk about this for the meantime global scope and we have what we call in this case i think this is going to be a function scope of whatever we declare inside of this will be a function scope and we haven't yet covered functions so Perhaps we can do that in a separate video, but for now, I just want to go and work on writing some code here first. Then perhaps we can try to go and explore how and how to read the code we would want to set here. I'm just going to say node to D. Let's have a function declaration. And we have an identifier, which is a built-in method inside of the Godot language. And we usually, uh, in other programming languages, we use curly brackets. And I think the equivalent of that in, in Godot will be the colon. And right now, what are the things that we would want to do? So the first thing that I would want to uh, set here is a pseudo code. But let's say I want to look for the player in the scene okay so that's the first thing that i want to do so how do we get try to go and do that and i have declared this variable player so i'm just going to copy that and there are built-in methods that we can try to use and get three method you would see it's telling us this is a function and we can try to use that and from get three we can access another function and that's the get root and we can also access another function which is get node and inside of the get node i would want to go to this level one uh, scene which is inside of the main uh, type node that we have okay so i know that there's a player inside of that that I want to access, and that means this is pertaining to this node player that we have inside of the main. And if I go back 
here, uh, the goal here is us for us to look for that player node inside of the main level one scene that we have. And this is a, you will see if we hover, this is a type node 2D. That's what we declared here, right? Okay. So now let's have another function here. So in other programming languages, you usually will be declaring a function and then an, a function identifier. This is a function keyword in other programming languages. And we have an identifier. And again, this can be something customized. But in this case, we will be using a built-in method. And that's a physics process. And you will see it's auto-completing uh, with the help of Godot uh, IntelliSense. And we would want to have a player and let's have a var direction to player. Sign to player dot. And this is just pertaining to this. And we're going to want to access in that player a position property. So I think there's a possible. Can we find a position property here? Mm. So collision, moving, we have trans okay, there's that position property. So from that position property, uh, we want to access a global position, then minus global position. Then let's have another variable declaration. And we want to have a distance to player, assign the value of direction to player dot length method. And, and now we want to check if distance to player is assigned or equal to or less than or equal to detection range. So that means we're pertaining to this. So that's a value of 200. And we have to first figure out um, how far the player is, right? So let's see here. Detection range. And inside of that nested if statement, we want to have another if statement if distance, or let's say. Let's have a function first that we will be creating here. So we want to have a move towards player. And in the move towards player, we want to set a parameter direction vector 2. And we want to set a velocity. We declare a velocity direction multiplied by speed. And that means this one. And we have this direction that serves as an access to a vector 2. And if I remember it correctly, we talked about vectors uh, in our script lessons. Where's our... I can recall it. Vector, vector 2. Where did we naming conventions? Naming conventions. Vector three, I think here. So these are some methods, uh, but in this case, we're not going to do it that way. Let's go back here uh, in the enemy GD. So the next thing that I want to do here is to go and access a move and slide function built in. This is a built-in function. And again, we would want to have here 
Vector to move towards player. What's saying? Indented block if. Velocity moving slide. And we want this to have an indent, indented block. Hmm. I think that's because we weren't able to set that column there. 22 detection range and we want to have this move towards layer method and this is basically this okay we're just creating this function so that we will have instructions to the computer to initialize a velocity that is going to be uh, multiplied from the direction, multiplied by speed from the vector 2. And the direction here is vector 2. And we're multiplying it by the speed value that we have in the variable declaration that we have here. And right now, what we want to do is, as we try to move towards a player, we want to go and normalize it. So, direction to player and dot normalize. Okay, so I think we can just go in. Test this out. What would happen first? And we can, and now we can see that that all uh, those are squares that are trying to uh, at a specific distance. Those squares now are able to <laughs> try to run after our player. Okay, so now our player is trapped. Okay, and he is now stuck. <laughs> so of course we we might want to go and figure out how to heal enemies in our game here. Uh, so let's just go back and look at again. So this is a very simple AI or let's say set of uh, code that we have written, and we have some variable declarations. We extended from the character body to the class. Uh, we are using a uh, variable player so that we can go and access this player node inside of the main type node 2D. And then we have a function that is built in, which is the ready function. And inside of that, we wanted to look for the player inside of that scene. So we wanted to use this access to this level one scene to find that player and we declared it here and we are assigning it the value of the method get tree that has a, another method inside of it get root and we're getting another method inside of it which is the get node and we're trying to pass in the path so this is the path towards that main uh, 2d type node and then access the child of that, which is the player uh, node that we have here. And we have another function, which is a built-in function, the physics process. This is a bit similar with the function update in Unity. And I've been reading a little bit about it. And I think this is going to be in relation to a uh, fixed update in Unity. Okay, uh, But we can cover that in a different session. And now we have some variable custom declaration, uh, which is the direction to player. And we're trying to access this player again, uh, the properties of that. And we're looking for global position minus global position. Then we have uh, another uh, direction or variable custom declaration, which is distance to player. And we're trying to get this direction to player dot length. Uh, with the use of the dot length method, or we're accessing the dot length method here. And in here we have an uh, another if statement if distance to player is less than 
or equal to detection range, that means this one, which is 200 as of now, float value with the float data type. And we created a function that will be allowing us to access the vector 2. And we're having a key value pair here for the direction. And we're assigning it a value of vector 2. So vector 2 multiplied by speed. We now have that velocity and we are now able to move in a slide. What if I go and try to stop that? Let's see what would happen. So you will see that the player is not moving because we are not setting that velocity value here. But if we have this here, uh, we should be able to see that that now will be working. Okay, so those are just some things to explore. We can try to further read uh, the code base and try to further understand uh, whatever we have written here. So that's it for this session. Thank you and see you on our next lesson.